Dave Ramsey's very famous baby steps is a recognized method to pay off debt get into financial stability and ultimately grow your wealth. I want to show you how you can apply that if you're living in the UK. So today's video is especially important if you're interested in the concepts of that particular money management system, I think you're going to find it really useful. Hi there, welcome back to my channel today. My name is Jennifer from mamafurfur.com. I make videos all about personal finance, investing and success mindset here in the UK. My focus is to help people get as much value from their money as they can, but also driving financial freedom and stability. We do this through using our money smarter, but also creating side hustles, passive incomes, basically allowing money to keep coming into your hands to design life on your terms. So if you're brand new today, I want you to hit subscribe so you never miss any of my videos and also you can hit that bell notification which means you always know when I upload every week. So if you've been on any money forums at all, you usually hear one name mentioned more often than not, and that is the name of Dave Ramsey, very famous US based money guru. And his whole passion is getting people out of debt and actually using their money to drive wealth. He has a very prescribed system that he wants people to follow. He's very stringent and he doesn't like people swing from that at all. But his created steps are actually very centric on the US market, particularly some of the recommendation he makes. So today, video as I said I want to break down what is the UK equivalent of those steps so if you fancy following his advice doing exactly what he says which as everything there's many money methods out there but his particular method I'm going to tell you about the equivalent UK versions for you so it's always really important as well to get an understanding of what this method involves ultimately his steps have a very prescribed sequence that he likes you to do things I'm not going to share whether it's my philosophy those steps I will leave that basically in your hands to decide what fits for you but just be aware there are other money systems out there I have my money stacks method which is about kind of sending your money in multiple directions rather than just one focus at a time but if you fancy checking out that video you can in the description bar below I'm not also not going to suggest this is the only method that works he's very famous because he's very passionate about helping people he has a weekly and a daily show that he actually helps people get out of debt and give that practical advice so it is incredible incredibly inspirational for that passion that he has. Hopefully these steps, if you're looking for something just to give you more confidence in following what he prescribes, these steps broken down should be exactly what you're looking for. So in total for the baby steps, there's seven steps. Step zero, so before we even get on the seven steps, step zero is following a zero-based budget. Now this is actually the budgeting system I follow with my family. So if you're looking for a way to do that electronically, a zero-based budget like Dave Ramsey wants you to do, go and check out my autopilot money system. It's on Etsy, collection of spreadsheets, I'll let you go and find out, but it basically helps you work a zero-based budget. Basically a zero-based budget means that every single pound that you earn into your house, you spend and allocate in a certain place. Now not necessarily you have to spend it of course, you're sending it to savings or to debt or to sinking funds but every single pound is accounted for. And with a zero base budget, we actually do this at the start of the month. So before we get paid, we know how we're allocating money. The great thing about a zero base budget is you can actually manipulate it and see what things bring you joy, what things you'd maybe like to reduce, but also gives you clear boundaries about where you want your money to go. I'm very much in the mind frame, your budget should reflect the life you want now and in the future. It should include your goals. It should also include fun and life. It shouldn't be painful. And so including elements like debt repayment, having fun money, actually having sinking funds, which are savings towards some of those bigger yearly expenses should all be included in a zero based budget. It's the ideal place to start as well if you've never budgeted before, simply looking at what you're spending right now and are you in deficit? Are you spending more than you earn or are you actually in surplus? That will be the ultimate deal breaker really to get back on a positive financial journey. So using a zero based budget, I really strongly believe and agree with is the ultimate way to budget. So the first baby step is creating a thousand dollar emergency fund. I'm actually going to say that that can be straight translated into a thousand pounds. It's really nice even number that we can go for. If you're on a lower income though, if you're perhaps earning less than 20,000 pounds a year, I'd probably say aiming for 500, 600 pounds as a first goal towards that thousand would be the ideal starting place. The whole point of that emergency fund of a thousand pounds is so that you aren't tempted to put 
anything more onto your consumer debt. A lot of people start the journey with baby steps because they've got credit card debt, they've got loans, and so we're trying to break that habit with these steps. That emergency fund basically has to be used for everything that your normal budget can't cater for. It's not for the routinely planned expenses. This is for literally if your car breaks down, if the washing machine breaks down, true emergencies. That you have that little bit of money that you can get instant access to, so you want it in a cash ISA or a current account, not in investments in any way, so you've got instant access same day to it. Basically that fund that allows you to stop spending on consumer debt. Why I think the thousand dollars, thousand pounds translation works so well is because it's a good solid amount for most people to have. Sometimes it equates to almost half a month's living expenses and often when we're thinking of those big appliances like your washing machine, your fridge, your car, that amount tends to cover for those one-off events. Baby step number two is paying off your consumer debt using the snowball method. Now the snowball method is a way of tackling your smallest debt regardless of the interest. So what you would actually do is write down all the consumer debt you have outside of your mortgage. So every credit card, every loan, you'd have to phone and find the exact amount of money that you are actually owing those people. The interest rate as well, write it all down. You put the smallest at the start and the largest at the bottom. Then your job is to throw as much money as you can within your budget at the smallest debt until it's paid off. Whilst you're tackling the first debt, you actually put the minimum payments only on the rest of the debt. So we're never going to the red, we're making those minimum payments, however the priority is for that first smallest debt. Then when we paid that off, we move on to the next smallest debt and then so on. And we use the total amount that we've been paying off debt onto the next debt. So it's a snowball, you can see it starts off small, gets bigger, 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 and we're tackling the biggest debt. There is a really great reason for this. Now mathematically, the avalanche method might be better. That's based on actually interest rates rather than the amount you owe. Basically how much of your loans are generating more money that you need to pay off is working out that way. So if you wanted to use the avalanche method, then strictly speaking, that's not Dave Ramsey's way. However, the great thing about the snowball method is it's emotional paying off the debt. So there's a really good solid feeling when you know you've tackled one debt and it's cleared, you then move on to the next one. It's really easy wins, especially if you had debt for a long time and it seems overwhelming. I've been there, we've had 24,000 pounds of credit card debt, so I know what that feels like. And when you start at the smallest and work your way through it, then absolutely the positive feeling you get of putting more money in your pocket eventually allows you to then have that sense of relief. Within the autopilot money system as well that I created, there's actually a spreadsheet section purely for debt repayment. It shows you the snowball method, the avalanche, and it also tells you the exact amounts of money you put towards each debt. So again, if you want that help from me, go and check that out. Baby step number three is saving three to six months of living expenses. So by this point, we have a thousand pounds emergency fund, we have no consumer debt outside of our mortgage, and now we're looking for that emergency fund, or I actually like to call it the new opportunity fund, that's really the large part of our savings. Three to six months is the guideline from Dave Ramsey. I tend to agree at least three months, and I would say it's your total bills. So it's your mortgage, your rent, it's all your utilities, it's transport, its food so that you could live safely and comfortably should you lose your sources of income. Now of course the great thing is if you watch my channel we should be driving multiple sources of income so that your job is not the only worry or the only income in your life. When you actually create that three to six months, I call it new opportunity rather than emergency fund, it's because it would allow you to do life differently should the opportunity arise as well. So again, we want that money actually in an easy access account, not in investments. We want immediate access in case something happened, we needed to dip into it. Along with that, step 3B is sometimes referred to, and that's saving up for a home deposit. I really strongly agree that having a mortgage, having a home is one of the best decisions you can make, particularly because when you are working towards having four walls completely paid off, nobody can take that from you. You and your family are always safe. So step 3B is actually saving towards a home deposit. Dave Ramsey actually says between 10 to 20% saved for a home deposit at a time, really so that you're actually getting the best mortgage deal. I would tend to agree that that 20% is a fantastic goal. It won't guarantee you the cheapest rates in the UK right now. You probably have to be closer to 35 to 40 to get your loan to value ratio low enough. He also recommends having a 15 year mortgage. I would say don't let that hinder you from actually taking out a mortgage. If you can only afford the option of a 20 or 25 year, I would rather you had the home. But his advice is aiming for 15 where you can. Obviously tied into actually saving 
saving for a deposit, getting in the habit of actually saving the amount that you would be paying on a mortgage before you actually have that home is a fantastic practice. I even say apply my 10% rule on your mortgage payments. So now that we have a home, I overpay by 10% every single month consistently. 10% of that monthly amount. That's actually taken off 10 to 12% of the length of time of our mortgage. It's gone from 25 years down to 22 with that tiny little amount of money added on. Could be the price of a takeaway or two in a month, but for us, it makes sense. We're eating into more of the loan due. We're paying back that capital far quicker. Baby step number four is all to do with your pensions and early retirement. Now in the US, he says put 15% of your gross income into their particular retirement options. They don't have any form of state pension over there. So that 15% practice is really so that they can eventually retire. In the UK, we have the state pension, obviously the age that you can get access to that and the amount will differ by the time we actually get there, perhaps a couple of years down the line, how much you would actually get. So I would say don't assume that you're going to get or it's going to be much by the time you get to retirement. Instead, that 15%, I absolutely agree with. That's a good ballpark figure putting into private pensions or investment ISAs or even your company pension. If you have the option to have a company's pension through your employer, so they're basically adding contributions on your behalf of what you sacrifice from your wage, please take that money and run. My employer actually doubles my contribution. I put in one amount and they double that on top. So it's free money I'm not having to earn. I have the option to not put in a pension, but I'd be missing out on that money towards my future. Obviously with a pension, it's locked away till I'm 57 or 65, whatever the terms will be as I get closer to that age. However, that is extra money that over time will compound and gather momentum. And also, if you've got a private pension, remember, you get the tax relief. So for every amount you put in post-tax, the government will give you between 20 to 41% on top, depending on if you're a high taxpayer or you're a normal taxpayer. So really to cover that strategy, he says 15% of your gross amount is going towards pensions or retirement in some way. The divide is really up to yourself. Personally, I max out my contributions from my employer. That is a no brainer. There's free money there. Then I don't take that as for granted. I actually put between 10 and 20% in an investment ISA and private pension for my family. Investment ISAs are fantastic because you can get access at any point in time. They're tax free up to £20,000 deposited every year, whereas a pension you can only put up to £40,000. And of course, it's deferred until your pension age. So if you fancy thinking about investment ISAs, how they can maybe help you retire earlier than the government want you to retire or your pension, go and check out my best of playlist. There's tons of resources about the stock market, investment ISAs, even teaching you how to open private pensions with Pension B if you fancy it too. If you're self-employed as well, remember you need to take responsibility for your pension. So go for these private pension options where you're getting the tax uplift or think about investment ISAs. Even better, think about a combination of both. Having that 15% though that Dave suggested allows you to potentially retire between 35 to 40 years being financially stable and relying on your own incomes. So just bear that in mind, this isn't a short term retirement. His method is very much the longer term, as if you're in your 20s to 30s, perhaps in your 40s, looking for retirement at around that 50, 60 age. Baby step number five is all to do with our children's education. So in the US, he says obviously start saving for those college degrees and those funds. In the UK, well I live in Scotland, so I actually the first degree for my children hopefully will still be free. It certainly was when I went through the education system. Then in the UK, of course, simply saving, you've got your investments and your retirement, putting money aside for your education of your children is certainly not a bad thing to consider. Depends though on the location and the likelihood of your children going to further education. I'm not going to give an exact amount that you should put by for your children, that's a very personal thing, but certainly doing that step where you're thinking forward about your children's future, regardless of their age, is a really great solid financial decision. Baby step number six is one of my favourite and it's pay off your mortgage. So now that we've got our retirement fund sorted, we're paying something for our children's education, we can pay off our mortgage. That means literally 
throw any excess money as quickly as you can at those payments. Remember, of course, you have to make sure within your T's and C's of your mortgage that you won't get penalized. Sometimes there is a limit up to 10%. A year can only be paid off of the total loan due. So just be aware before you attempt to pay off your mortgage, make sure the amounts you're putting in are within those limits or that you're okay with those possible charges. You might also think about actually reducing the length of your mortgage at that time. If you're comfortable with the total amount you're paying consistently, perhaps shorten the loan and that way you know you're getting rid of it far quicker. And finally, the last baby step, number seven, is build wealth and give. His philosophy is very much giving at least 10% towards charities or causes you believe in. You're in a great solid position, of course, because you've gone through all those steps before. You don't have consumer debt. You've paid off your mortgage. You're really doing everything, including your retirement, as best as you can. Now it's time to build the wealth, but not in a way of a lack mindset. It's not about frugality. It's actually about building wealth so that you can do better things. And that's why I really like having that give portion of the baby steps. We're not just trying to hoard it for ourselves, but we're hoping to then give it to things that we believe in as well. So that's the UK equivalent version of Dave Ramsey's baby steps. As I say, it's very much a US driven philosophy. You'll find a lot of literature and his books, in fact, are written with that US audience in mind. My hope is having these UK terms, knowing which accounts like the investment ISA, like your pension that you should be thinking of. It's still a bit woolly in terms of what would Dave do exactly, but I would say with anything, follow the structure and the the principles behind it. Don't worry about meeting exact amounts of money so you can tick a box. Think, does this actually make me feel good? I'm paying off my debt in this method, yep, this feels great for us. We'll move on to the next step. But every month I do that zero-based budget like Dave does as well. I find it hugely beneficial for our family. We have our goals, we have what we're working towards, very similar to the way that Dave does as well. goal oriented but for a better security future for you and your family. Thank you so much for watching today. It's been really exciting covering these baby steps. I'm always fascinated by how other people suggest you handle your money. There's great principles, great philosophies out there, but it's okay as well to take other people's advice but adapt it to suit yourself as well. I really appreciate what Dave Ramsey is doing for a lot of people. He's promoting getting rid of consumer debt. He's promoting retirement thinking. Really solid habits that any age from 18 to 65 to 70 should be doing with their money for stability and security. So hopefully today has inspired you to maybe check out Dave's Baby Steps. Maybe check out some other methods out there as well. But ultimately, this is your money. I want to give you the freedom back to make great choices and be able to use it for the life that you want. As always, you've got plenty of resources on this channel, tons of videos. Go and have a good look. You've also got my blog, mamafurfur.com. There's lots of blog posts there about a whole range of investing, budgeting, loads of topics there. You've also got my e-course, which is Budgeting Success Bootcamp. I take you through 18 tutorials how to budget better, including including some of the topics that Dave covers. And also I've got my book, The Master Money Blueprint. So I've really got a lot of resources for you if you fancy taking this video, getting the next step in your financial knowledge. Don't forget to leave me a comment if you enjoyed today's video and a thumbs up. Really love hearing your suggestions for topics to cover on this channel. And I do attempt to try and make videos as quickly as I can from your suggestions as well. So if you've got a topic in mind, you've got those bursting questions, leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.